Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to water cool your PC and more along the lines of what fittings you should be using for your PC. Now my aim is to target those beginning water cooling, so I'm going to briefly go over the fittings that you might come across for a liquid cooled system. Now there are different fittings that you should look for according to size and the type of tubing that you're gonna be using in your system. So let's get into the video. Liquid cooling could seem like such a daunting task. There are many questions to be answered. What type of fittings do I get? What type of tubing do I get? Do I go soft tubing or rigid tubing now by rigid tubing I mean those tubing that are hard and they all fit into a fitting such as these compressions here so that could include copper tubing that could could include acrylic tubing or PETG all of those tubings fall into the rigid tubing category so let's start with our basic loop using soft tubing as that is what many of you will go for for your first liquid cooled system soft tubing comes in many sizes and can be used throughout the system without breaking the bank too much. What is good about soft tubing is that it bends itself so you don't have to spend your time heating up the rigid tubing to bend it. What that also means is you are saving money because it does the bend itself and you don't have to fork out money on say 90 degree fittings if you don't want to bend your rigid tubing. This means less fittings in the build therefore saving more money. Now there are two main different ways that you can install soft tubing into your build. One might be these little barb fittings here. Basically this will just screw into the water block and the barb will fit on like so. Now the compression between the tube itself and the barb creates the watertight seal for your system. Now what many people will normally do is they'll put a zip tie around that just to make it a lot tighter. This is a great way to liquid cool your system and is very cost efficient. However, this does not compete with compression fittings which just add that little bit more safety to your system. Essentially, compressions do the exact same thing as the barb fittings. However, they are compressed a lot more by this little compression ring right here. So first off, you put the compression ring on the tube itself. Make sure it's facing up so that the threads can screw into the barb. As I just mentioned, this is the barb half. So the barb, just like before, inserts into the tube like so you'd push it in all the way until it reaches the end so essentially what we have here is exactly the same as before the barb simply inserts like that and then you'd put the cable tie over the top but now what we're going to do is going to bring the compression ring all the way up and screw that down now what this does is it compresses on the tube against the metal barb keeping it in place now that it's screwed on tight it is pretty obvious that this is not going to come out. So that's pretty much all you need for soft tubing. Just the tubes and a couple of these compression fittings will do the job. One thing that you do have to watch out for is the tubing size. Make sure you match the fitting size with the tubing. So normally when you're looking for rigid tubing, it can come in various sizes. Most common sizes are 16 millimeters, 13 millimeters, and 12 millimeters. Now these are the outer diameter of the tube. The reason they go by outer diameter is when you insert the tube into the fitting, the fitting is built to go around the outer diameter. So the inner diameter is not important for the fitting manufacturers. Now rigid tube fittings is where you find more variety. The reason for this is a lot of people don't want to bend their tubes themselves. So they can simply go out and purchase 90 degree fittings or different rotary fittings to create the bends in their system. So let's start with the basic component compression fittings for a liquid cooled system. Essentially, this works the same way as the soft tubing. However, we are now compressing a rubber O-ring against the tube to keep the water tight. So all of these little compression fittings will come with O-rings inside. As you see, I just pulled one out then. Now these little O-rings are important. They are there to keep all of the water inside. So to install your tube into one of these compression fittings, first you need to get the compression ring and put that through the tube to begin with. Next, you wanna get your O-ring, install that around the tube. You don't need to push that all the way down. And then you need to get the actual compression fitting itself, put it over the tube. The O-ring should be around the top of the tube right there. And then you simply push this down and tighten it up. Tightening this up, pushes on the o-ring which then pushes against the tube and the fitting itself creating a nice tight seal. There is one other variant that you can use when it comes to rigid tubing. 
you have these fittings here where you simply push the tube in and that's it. Essentially what is holding this in place is the seal between the two rubber o-rings on the inside and the tube itself. While this isn't as efficient as a compression fitting due to the fact that a compression fitting does this and also compresses the o-ring on the outside, it still does work. One thing to be mindful of when using these is that the tube ends could be a bit sharp and cut the o-rings on the inside as you are inserting them. Now one great thing to do with your tubes is purchase one of those kits that actually smoothen out the edges of the tube. Or you can simply use a bit of sandpaper and just smoothen out those edges a tiny bit so it slips in without creating the cut on the o-ring. There are also extension fittings which can be used for those hard to reach places. Common places that these can be used for are radiators. So if they're up the top, you've got fans on the bottom of the radiator, it's hard to get a fitting up there to reach in. So you could instead Install one of these and then you could install your compression fitting on the end of that, making it easier to reach the tube. Some people don't like to spend their time bending the tubes and instead have fittings do the bending for them. This is where these come in handy. This is threaded on the bottom end with a rubber o-ring. This simply screws into your water block and then creates that 90 degree angle which you can then attach your compression fitting to to continue the tube run. If you do want a 90 degree bend in your tube run, you can simply use one of these guys at the corner. Essentially what this is, is a 90 degree turn with two compression fittings at the end. You simply undo these, insert the tube, do it back up and the tube will be compressed. Here we have a valve, which is really great for draining your system. Now, typically you wanna try and place one of these at the lowest point of your system and normally under the reservoir. That's the point that contains the most liquid for your system and that would be the easiest point to drain and get the liquid out. Now, how this works is it has a valve which opens and close. While your system is on, you wanna keep this closed and one of these stop fittings on the end. When you are ready to drain in your system simply undo this stop fitting here and you'll notice that the water will still not come out because the valve is closed you can grab a container or a bucket even add a bit of soft tubing to the end screw it in like this to give you extra room to drain the liquid through the tube and then open the valve when you are ready draining a system like this you'll notice that not all of the liquid will come out really fast. The reason for this is the liquid needs something in the reservoir to replace it with. You can't just have liquid fall out and nothing replace it. Now this is where reservoirs with a lot of fill ports up the top come in handy. By having one of these stop fittings up the top of your reservoir, this allows you to replace the liquid with air. So what you want to do is attach your soft tube to the end of this, open this up and let the liquid start flowing and then remove one of these ports from the top of your reservoir you'll notice that the liquid will start flowing a lot more because it's allowing air to come into the top and replace the liquid this essentially works the same way as if you have a straw you put it into water and then you plug the top of the straw with your thumb you'll notice that the water doesn't come out at all or it might drip here and there but then you let go of the top of the straw and the water just falls out it essentially is exactly the same way so how would you install one of these into your system what you want to do is you want to find one of those ports down the bottom of your reservoir and you want to get something like a T-join. Now this has three different holes on each side, making it easy to route your tube in whichever direction you want. So what I would normally do is I would grab a fitting and make this join to the reservoir. I then have two free ports. One is where my tubing will route out and continue the loop. And the other port is where I'd use this valve fitting to join onto. So if I do cycle my pump and I'm trying to get the liquid out and I'll have the valve open, some liquid will still make it through the loop. However, you also have a lot of the liquid draining out through the valve, and this is all due to gravity. You can also get systems that use rotary fittings. Now, rotary fittings are really good for creating different bends which you could not achieve with a normal tube. For instance, right now I have a 90 degree bend, but I can all of a sudden make a really quick sharp turn just by turning this fitting up. So now, essentially, it's gone as an S-bend. These fittings are great for those really tight 
bends which you need to connect two points in the loop. Last but not least, I want to talk to you about bulkhead or pass-through fittings. Now, a lot of you guys won't necessarily use these, but I just wanted to talk about them anyway because I get a lot of questions about these. So essentially, what these fittings do is they bring the liquid through the front this is joined onto a panel and then it brings it out to the other side of the panel. Now how this works is by unscrewing the back ring of the bulkhead fitting, it becomes two sections. Now you drill a hole in your panel and you insert this through the panel. On the back side of the panel, you then screw this down so it's tight again. So now the panel is in the middle of this fitting and it is just sitting there. In the middle it is threaded so you are able to add your compression fittings or your push fittings in like so. So now essentially the loop passes straight through the panel. Now this is what gives that nice clean look in my Project Severed Blue and in a lot of other custom PCs. It's just threaded all the way through so you can screw in any G quarter inch fitting. So there you have it guys, that is my basic fitting guide for beginners. Hopefully you all enjoyed, hopefully you learnt something new. There are plenty of other fittings that I've got out here to show you guys, but I think that's more for an advanced water cooling guide. As I said, I use a hundred different type of fittings. There's so many different types of fittings out there for you guys to use, but those are the main ones and the basic ones that I feel like a beginner needs to know because anything more fancier, you're starting to put in extra cost to your loop and you also have to get a bit more creative with the loop. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed videos like this. Please let me know down in the comments if you did enjoy this guide. This is something that I'm really passionate about. I like making guides and helping people and hopefully you all enjoyed as well. So now I've got to pack my fittings up. Hopefully you all enjoyed this this video please leave it a like and subscribe guys and we'll see you all in the next video thanks guys